Hey, Jim with Cuff and Stuff. Well, we had a subscriber that just happens to live locally that I ran into the other day. He said, I've seen you do pulled pork on about everything you've got except a Weber kettle. Can't you do it on a Weber kettle? That's all I've got. And I said, sure, I can do one on a kettle. And so today, that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna show my buddy how to do a Boston butt on the Weber kettle. So let's get it started, hang tight. Well, today we're working with about an eight pound, I really didn't check it out, but that's about right. It's about an eight pound but, and I'm really not going to do a whole lot to it. Um, there are a couple of little ligaments that I want to get out. Anything that I find hanging loose, it's just going to burn. So I'm going to take it off. I've already rinsed it, so I'm really not going to do a whole lot of trimming. Um, that's not a real thick fat cap on here, so I'm just going to leave it. This is moist enough. I'm not going to use a binder today on this. I'm going to take now. This is Uncle Steve's competition pig powder. This is going to be my first shot with this on a butt doing pulled pork. Um, I'm not going to inject it. I'm not going to do anything with it. I'm just going to use Uncle Steve's shake on it. So this is again pretty thick meat so it will take a lot of seasoning and should hold it fairly well. So I'm going to cover him good. Let me get him covered all the way around here and I'll bring you back. Okay, we've got him coated up good with that good old Uncle Steve shake and we're gonna let him sit and sweat for a few minutes I don't know 15 20 maybe 30 minutes we'll see um, this just came out of the refrigerator so it's plenty cool in the meantime we're gonna go out and get our fire ready get it started and then we'll bring you back Okay, well, I don't know whether you can see it. I'm trying to show it to you. I've got about a little less than half of this little pit barrel chimney. It's a little half chimney. And if, if you've watched my videos, you've seen me do many times. I'm going to take this little olive oil here. That's what I had. It works just as good as anything does. And we'll get it started, get it burning, and I think I have a neighbor that likes to get in my videos. He always seems to crank something up loud when he sees my camera come out. <laughs> so anyway, there we go, we're gonna start that. I'll show you when we pour it in, so we'll bring it back. Okay, we've got, this is actually uh, used charcoal that I had left over from another cook. That's all right, it'll work just fine. I'm gonna pour these hot charcoals just on this side. And we've got, some 
uh, pecan wood scattered out through it, get a little smoke. And we're gonna take, put the grill on. There we go. We've got a drip pan. I'm gonna start out with these wide open and let this come up to temp. And I'll bring it back when I put the meat on. Okay, well, we've got our little kettle up, 220, and it may climb a little bigger than that. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this right here. And if you notice, I did put it fat cap up. The heat's gonna come up around the dome and come over this way. So we're just gonna let her go. Let the kettle do what she does. We'll kind of keep an eye on the temperature. I've got one in the um, cooker. I've got one in the kettle, as you can see. I'm gonna take the second one and I'm gonna put it right down in there and I missed the bone, which is a good thing. And so we're gonna keep an eye on both temperatures and put the top back on before it runs away with us. And we're gonna let it cook. And let's see, I tell you, let's check on it. Uh, first time we'll check on it in about three hours. So we'll bring you back then. Okay, well, we're four hours in, and this is actually the first time we've checked it. We've had some pretty windy conditions out here on the patio, and we haven't been cooking as hot as we would have liked to, but we've just been letting the little kettle do what she does. So she's been cooking about 225 right now it's it's at 240 um let's check and see well we're getting a little color not bad not bad we're getting a little color here oh my goodness it smells delicious but i tell you what i'm gonna do i'm gonna turn this baby around uh. Uncle Steve shake. Uh. <laughs> Excuse me. Well, tell you what, we're going to let her do what she does. If I have to bring you back in the dark, we're going to let it cook till it gets right. So we'll let her run and in a little while we'll bring you back. Okay. Well, we're five hours in. Finally, the wind has settled down. That's let the grill temperature go up a little bit. And we're behind. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and we're gonna wrap him up and let him finish. So, let's take him, wrap him up good and tight, like this. There we go. We got him in a nice little bundle. And let's go back over here. All right, you can see, now I added a little charcoal. It was necessary. We were starting to play out a little bit. Um, it's catching back up before it gets too high. Let's take, put him back over here. Let's put our probe back in there. Close it back up. And we're gonna keep an eye on that thermometer. Well, seven hours and 55 minutes after we started this cook, we've lost the light. The temperature has dropped out here almost 20 degrees. 
but the wind died down when the sun went so we were able to maintain a more steady temperature we did kick it up a little bit we added a little charcoal and i don't know whether you can see this or not but i'm going to try to show you 205 was what we were looking for and you see we're still holding steady at 275 degrees so what we're going to do is we're going to take this butt off it's been a long afternoon of cooking. We're gonna take, <coughs> pull the probe out, and let's see if we can go real quick, just like that, over into it. Mm. Man, it smells good. All right, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take this in, we're gonna let it rest a little bit, and then we'll bring you back. Okay, we've let this sit for, well, I don't know, 30, 45 minutes or so. We've let it rest. Here's a tip. These cotton gloves you can find at like Tractor Supply. Walmart probably has them. They're cheap working gloves. You can buy a bag of these things for like 10 bucks. Okay, you get them on. You can start shredding this pulled pork. It really helps shield the heat off your hands. All right, let's open him up and see. All right, first thing that I can tell you is, see the split? You start getting a split. Next thing, what you want to look at is you want to see if you can pull this bone out. And look, see it just pulled out clean. There ain't anything on it. Oh, yeah. All right. Let's take him. And I want to dump this and all the you into my pan. I was going to save all of that. And the next thing you do is just look, see how that's just gonna fall apart. Oh my goodness. And I've seen a lot of people in the Southeast, they'll take and take a meat cleaver and chop this up, but you don't need to do that. You see the smoke in it? Mm. That's some pretty looking pulled pork. It's just as juicy. Man alive, that's pretty. And it's just coming apart. We're going to take, let me get all of this shredded with my hands. And when we do, we'll bring you back. Okay, we've got it pulled. Now I'm going to take a little bit more of this competition pig powder and I'm going to put a little bit on it and I'm going to mix it up Uncle Steve says before, during and after well I agree alright that's enough Get it mixed up good. Ooh. I'm not cooking if I'm not making a mess. That's for sure. I definitely believe in cleaning up. <laughs> Keeps the peace, if you know what I mean. All right. We've got it mixed up. Isn't that pretty? Mm, 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 mm. All right. Well, only one thing left to do. Okay. Mm. I'm sorry. 
I can't share with you, but I can try it. Mm. Uncle Steve, that competition pig powder is a perfect match. Mm, that's spot on. Well, guys, I appreciate you hanging around. It sure took forever to get this one done. Normally, I can get this done on the Weber in about six hours or so, maybe a little longer. But we cooked it low and slow. John, you wanted to know, could we do it on a Weber kettle? Well, there you go. That's it on a Weber kettle. Again, thanks for hanging around. If you haven't already, hit this button over here and subscribe. We'll have another video for you on this side. Till the next time, hang tight. Mm -hmm.